today we will discuss uh, accounting process. Uh, last lecture we briefly described what a stochastic process is. We said that a stochastic process is simply a sequence of random variables indexed by time, all right. So, the time variable could be a discrete variable or a continuous variable. So, in that, uh, so it could be a discrete time stochastic process or a continuous time stochastic process. Uh, this uh, counting process uh, is something we will define uh, now and we will use uh, this throughout the course, okay. So, this counting process uh, we will first look at the you know in, in continuous time. So, we look at uh, non negative time okay n of t okay. So, this n of you look at you look at n of t n of 0 is taken to be 0 and loosely n of t naught is the number of arrivals in 0 t naught okay. So, you can think of this n of t as simply counting the number of sum of arrivals. These arrivals you could be standing at a bus stop and counting the number of buses all right. Uh, or you could be waiting for a radioactive uh, sample to emit alpha particles. You could be you could have a counter and count the number of uh, particles that have been emitted. Uh, so, at some time t naught non negative time t naught it it counts the total number of arrivals where these arrivals could be bus arrivals or radioactive uh, decays or whatever in the interval 0 t naught 0 not included t naught included okay. Is that clear? <coughs> and this is defined for every t naught greater than or equal to 0 okay. And this is a random variable. So, for a fixed time t naught n of t naught is a random variable all right. So, this n of t takes uh, non negative integer values right. So, some particular uh, sample path could be like this. So, there is always 0 this is n of t against t okay. So, the first arrival might have occurred here then n of t jumps oops sorry n of t jumps by 1 unit right and then stays constant then another arrival comes here it jumps by 1 more okay. and so on all right the 1 2 3 4 and so on all right so this is for a particular realization omega okay so what i'm what i'm really plotting here is n of t comma omega if you had some other realization the some other little omega then you could have a different the, the step function will look different it could you know look like that or some such right this is for uh, some omega prime right. So, given different realizations uh, little omega you get different uh, these step functions all right and this n of t is the counting process of interest. Now, there are so this n of t describes a sequence of random variables right for each continuous time t right and for any particular little omega you get a step function n of uh, a step function right n of t comma little omega uh, and for any particular time this n of t is some random variable right that is the picture we have in mind. Now, this uh, counting process uh, can also be described e equivalently in terms of the inter arrival times of these buses or radioactive particles or whatever it is that you are talking about all right. So, if you are looking at the this black the black sample path 
that I drew you here, the first arrival happened right at some particular time, let us say S1, all right. The second time, second arrival happened at a time, uh, so let me call this as S2 and I can call these inter arrival times as x1, x2 and so on, okay. So, x2 of so this is x1 of little omega, x2 of little omega, x1 of little omega, x s2 of little omega and so on, right. So, s i or s, s little n denotes the epoch, it is called an epoch, e p o c h, okay, epoch of the nth arrival, okay. So, s2 here is the epoch of the second arrival, okay. So, we can view this S n, uh, let me write here, S n as, as the epoch of the nth arrival, okay. I am just uh, defining certain things. Likewise, you can call X n as S n minus define X n as S n minus S n minus 1, this is has the interpretation as it can be interpreted as the inter arrival time between the n minus 1 th arrival and the nth arrival. Is that clear? So, in this picture uh, S2 is the S2 is this total length, S1 is the epoch of the first arrival, S2 is the epoch of the second arrival, X2 is simply S2 minus S1, all right. So, it is the time between the second arrival and the first arrival. Is that clear? So, clearly there is a one to one relationship. So, if I give you the, the S, the SIs, right, the arrival epochs, you can go ahead and calculate the XNs using this relationship, right. Likewise, if I give you the XNs, the XIs, you can calculate the SIs, right. So, you can write for example, SN is equal to sum over XI i equals 1 through n, right. So, you can go back and forth between the sequence x i s and the sequence s i s, clear. So, these are all random variables. So, a given little omega realizes and this entire sequence x i s realizes the entire sequence s i s realizes, right. And for different omegas, you get these different realizations, okay. And of course, you get different n of t of omega, n of t comma omega, all right. For different omegas, you get different step functions. Any questions on this, this picture? So, we have talked about a counting process, it is simply a, uh, it is a non-negative integer valued process defined in continuous time which just counts the number of arrivals until time t, right. And associated with this process n of t is are these two, two different sequences of random variables, s n s which are, which are the arrival epochs and these x n s which are the inter arrival times. Now, there exists a very nice relationship between so relationship between n t and s n. What can be shown is a relation like this. So, let me say a proposition. for any integer n greater than or equal to 1 and any time t greater than 0, we have
the event that S n less than or equal to t is equal to the event n of t greater than or equal to n. So, for every n and every t, every integer n greater than or equal to 1 and any t greater than 0, we have that S n less than or equal to t is same as n t greater than or equal to n. Okay. So, now let me tell you, I mean maybe I should write this out a little bit. So, we, uh, what I really say is this, those omegas where S n of omega less than or equal to t is the same set of omegas for which n t omega is greater than or equal to n. This is true for all n greater than or equal to 1 and for all t greater than 0. Okay. This is what I mean by uh, when I write that, when I write that, I really mean that. Okay. So, if your realization omega little omega is such that your S n of that particular omega the epoch of the nth arrival is before or at t it is less than or equal to t no it is not after t then for that omega we are saying that the number of arrivals until t time t must be at least n and vice versa. <coughs> Okay. So, we are basically saying, so this is this is a set, right? this is a set of all omegas, this is a subset of uh, uh, the sample space, correct. This is some other subset of the sample space. We are saying that these two subsets of the sample space are equal. What does it mean to say that two subsets are equal? When you say subset A is equal to B, set A is equal to set B, it means that a is contained in B and B is contained in A, right. So, in order to prove this, you have to prove that the left hand side is contained in the right hand side and right hand side is contained in left hand side. So, if your little omega satisfies the left hand side property, it should also satisfy the right hand side property and vice versa, right. <coughs> so, you can prove this easily by just going back to the picture, right. Uh, so, so first I have to prove let us say this containment, right. So, if I have to prove that containment meaning that this, uh, this guy is contained in that guy. So, I am assuming that, so let omega be such that S n of omega is not equal to t. All right. Clear? So S n. So for this particular omega, so S n of omega is some tau which is less than or equal to t. Correct? Yes. So. <coughs> for this omega let S n omega equal to tau, right. Then what is n of tau? For this omega n of tau is sorry, for this omega n of tau is what? little n, right, because your for this little omega the nth arrival occurred at time tau. So, n of tau for this particular little omega is n, because you have to count the arrival until that point including that point, correct. So, this you agree, but it is always the case that if t is bigger than or equal to tau, then n of t is bigger than or equal to n of tau, yeah. 
because it is a it is it is obvious through the definition of the counting process. So, if you have seen a certain number of arrivals till time tau, if you look at a time that is after tau, you cannot have fewer arrivals right that is obvious right. So, since n t omega is greater than or equal to n tau omega, this is always the case <coughs> and this equals n, we are done right. So, this guy follows. Yeah, this containment follows. What have we shown? We have shown that if S n of omega is less than or equal to t, then we have shown that n t omega is greater than or equal to n, correct? Which means that this set on the left side is a subset of this set on the right side. But I have to prove that they are equal, which means that I have to prove that that set is contained in this set. So, for the other way around, so if I want to prove this containment, So, let omega be such that n of t omega is greater than or equal to n, <coughs> excuse me. So, what does this mean? For this particular omega, the number of arrivals up to and including time t is at least n correct which means that the nth arrival took place. So, we should we should we can go back and reason it out right. So, you can just say that S n of omega is right because if the if the nth arrival took place after t then n of t cannot be greater than or equal to n right so you can say then so maybe you can write this out so just to be perfectly clear right uh, this n of t omega greater than or equal to n so let's say so let me just let me do this once properly so let's say n of t omega is equal to m right which is something greater than or equal to n ok. All right. So, this implies so n of t omega equal to m implies that S m is less than or equal to t correct because I have gotten m arrivals right at time t right. So, the mth arrival has occurred by t right at t or before t. So, this implies that S n is less than or equal to t right for that particular omega. Maybe if you want you write S m of omega S n of omega. Okay. 